It's quite nice. We're talking about, you know, comes back into our sort of social media release thinking, but also writing for search engines. Who writes, who writes a press release with a search engine in mind? Still, a, f a few hands, but still a noticeable minority. Write it for social media. Write a social media release. But they still like the, the old stuff as well. They like the classic stuff. They like, you know, they like, I want, I want the interviews. I want the key contacts. So these classic sort of PR communicator roles. Professionalism, isn't that nice? What can, you know, we were, we were asking what can, you know, what can PRs do in this age of social media? They can still be professional in a formal way, that's good. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, it means good copy, it means reliable service, and it means crucially personal contact. And that sort of cuts away, that's not just sort of speaking to someone face to face, although obviously that's still important, it also means the personalization of what you're actually delivering. So not just sort of hitting everyone with the same message, but getting personal and addressing people as individuals, meeting their needs. Um, there is still this. There is still the, the sort of curmudgeons are still there. But there are people who really understand and really understand it's difficult and really want to sort of communicate and say, look, this is my problem. You can solve this problem quite easily. But you know, you get pers you know, you understand my personal needs and you will be a better communicator. Of course. <laughs> right, some uh, tentative conclusions. Um, very, very tentative. To some extent, we think we have rounded up the usual suspects here. We haven't found anything which has sort of shocked us. But I think the trends towards sort of, it's really important in my work, I'm using social media releases. Slightly more advanced than we thought. Certainly within these markets, I wasn't expecting the overriding importance within the UK to be greater than we saw eight months ago in America, for example. Obviously, there are sort of, you know, there are, there are certain skews in any given sample. But what we, really, what we really, really went for here was, we went through our database. It wasn't an online survey, so we tried, to, you know, so we, there was no sort of skew in the way people were actually reaching the material. <coughs> no real skew in the sort of media types that they're expressing themselves through. It's so, it, it, should be, it should be reasonable. But so, and on the whole, you see that, yeah, you, you see the people saying, oh, no, PRs go away, and, and some people saying, yeah, no, it's great. So you've got, you've got the kind of split that we, we would expect to see, but sl definitely moving towards something where people are using social media more and more, but particularly for promotion. But I think there's definitely an openness there to sort of bring in more social media into your conversations. I think that would be welcome. That is the impression that I'm, I'm getting from this. Certainly from the way they're using social media releases, from the way they're using social media in general, I think they would welcome communication from communicators in these channels, with the possible exception of Germany, because that's quite strange. <laughs> just one final thing. I know I, w I was going to ask Philip to say, because Philip also really sort of detected some tensions here. I don't know, do you want to? What, <coughs> what we were starting to, is that the complete? Answer? It's not. Anyway. What we were sort of seeing when we went through the um, qualitative data, there's a we had a large amount of comments. It would take a long time to, to sift through them and try and work out who's saying what. But we, we realised we had this media outlets, journalists, journal, uh, journalists here. We had PR communicators here. And we had maybe an area of the top, maybe a couple of graphic people who understand what's going on, the people who communicate using these new technologies and feel comfortable with them. And maybe there's a sort of shaded area here. And it includes a lot of journalists, it includes a lot of PR people. But within the Euroblog surveys, we identified what we called a two-speed Europe. The people who got it, the people who were keen on it, saw the opportunities for social media, and the people who dismissed it. But we still have that. We have, within the journalist side and the PR side, we've got journalists who understand what they're doing and understand the advantages. So there were a lot of journalists there. There's a reasonable number of comments where people are saying, PR does not, I don't like this, I don't want it. One of the comments was, I, I wish PR would go away, wasn't it? There was quite a few of that sort. And then there were, within the PR people, there were the people who understood what they were doing, and there were people who were still, still sit thinking, ah, the internet, we can just, it's like, it, it's a free way of doing everything, we can push. And really the difference was, within the PR bit, the communicators, between the people who understood creating dialogue, and the people are just sort of, this is a new way of shouting at people. What happens where we got a difficulty was when we had the old-style journalists 
and the shouting, un non-understanding PRs, our area of conflict was here. And this is, the, uh, this is where we're seeing the tensions between the two. The, 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 there still is a two-side PR communication here, journalism there, and this area of tension. One of the opportunities I think that Paul's survey has identified is that if communicators can understand the wider picture, not send PDFs to somebody who runs a website, understand how to send a social media release, that the, quali the, the defining quality of a social media release is that it is richness of content. It realises that you're not just sending it for a journalist to read, the journalist needs content for a, for a website, it needs content for, it needs video, it needs links, it needs richness. So we don't send a flat piece of paper, we send something that's content rich and it understands what it's going to be, how, it's, how the information is being repurposed. And if we can move more people within the PR side to this area, which understands how information is repurposed, the fact that you just put it out there and then people do whatever they want with it. And it is your challenge to put the bit out there in the most uh, acceptable, the most flexible and adaptive way. I think that this, this area of tension will begin to disappear. And if you can move far up that scale as possible, you're the ones who are going to be the most successful. Excellent. Excellent. That's a really good summary, I think. Thanks so much for that, Philip. Uh, I, think, uh, I think that's it. I think, I think we're going to call that a day, because um, I know the, the conference is about to kick off again downstairs. We are, as I say, Scandinavian surveys available at uh, Sweden websites, there's Norway websites, Denmark websites, all across Scandinavia. US survey already available on the US websites. This survey will follow soon 